Consider this, when it rains or snow melts, that water travels over various surfaces, collecting all sorts of debris, chemicals, and other pollutants along the way. Now, this runoff known as stormwater is a natural part of our ecosystem, but without proper management, it can become a significant source of pollution for our rivers, streams, lakes, and water supply. Our construction sites in particular pose a unique challenge to stormwater management. When natural soils and vegetation are disturbed or uprooted by construction activities, this can lead to significant soil erosion, allowing stormwater to carry sediment, which then enters nearby water sources. Now, this sediment pollution can cause water to become muddy and contaminated, potentially obstructing waterways, harming habitats, and overwhelming water treatment facilities. Pavement and other hard surfaces further reduce the land's natural ability to absorb stormwater, leading to flooding and introducing even more pollutants into our water. Soil erosion, hazardous waste, and the potential for chemical spills, all these factors contribute to making stormwater pollution from construction sites an environmental concern. That's why regulations like the National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System, or NPDES Stormwater Program, are in place to control stormwater discharges and protect our environment. In this training, we'll take a look at stormwater pollution from construction activities and the tools at our disposal to manage it effectively. We'll also guide you through the process of creating your own stormwater pollution prevention plan in line with NPDES templates. By the end of this training, you should have the knowledge and skills needed to tackle stormwater management at your construction site, helping create a safer, cleaner environment for us all. Let's get started. When it comes to stormwater management, two critical terms you should be familiar with are stormwater pollution prevention plans, or SWPPPs, and best management practices, or BMPs. A stormwater pollution prevention plan is a written strategy for managing and reducing stormwater runoff at a specific construction site, while BMPs are specific practices implemented to reduce pollutant discharges. Developing a stormwater pollution prevention plan starts with a site assessment to better understand the stormwater pollution risk you'll need to address. This includes recording site-specific conditions like existing vegetation, current storm water drainage patterns, and the site's overall topography, as well as any historic or natural resources that should be protected. Now, as a part of your assessment, you'll also identify any receiving waters where runoff from your site might flow, whether into storm drains, rivers, or other bodies of water. All these features and conditions should be recorded on your own pre-construction site map. Next, you'll need to identify and document any potential pollutants from your construction activities. Now, while the primary pollutant is sediment, other potential pollutants include things like fertilizers, sanitary waste, oil, grease, and fuel, heavy metals from paint or concrete, or any hazardous chemicals present on site. Now, once you've assessed the site and identified the potential pollutants, you'll need to make a plan for how to address each one of these. Now, this is where best management practices come in. Best management practices, or BMPs, can be divided into two main categories, structural and non-structural. Structural BMPs are the physical constructions or installations you have in place to prevent erosion, control runoff, or channel water into the correct areas. Some examples of structural BMPs include silt fences and sediment filter logs, uh, which serve as temporary sediment barriers surrounding a construction lot and can prevent stormwater runoff from leaving the site. Storm drain inlet controls, which include using materials like gravel, sandbags, or other barriers and filters to prevent sediment from entering storm drain inlets. Stabilized exit pads, like gravel over filter cloth at a construction exit, to prevent muddy vehicles from tracking sediment off-site. Sediment ponds and basins, which act as temporary pools for collecting and storing runoff, allowing sediment to settle at the bottom. Dust controls like water sprinklers, mulch, or gravel to reduce the amount of airborne sediment leaving the site. Erosion stabilization, including vegetation seeding, sod, mulching, or erosion control blankets to prevent erosion and promote vegetation growth. And construction safety fences, which simply help to contain construction activity from disrupting the existing vegetation and soil of neighboring lots. 
On the other hand, non-structural BMPs are the good housekeeping activities and other preventive procedures in place to reduce the chances that, that harmful contaminants enter our storm drains and waterways. Now, some examples of non-structural BMPs include waste management practices, ensuring the proper collection and disposal of all waste materials. Now, this could include everything from construction waste, like heavy metals from a concrete washout, to sanitary waste and regular site cleanups. Spill prevention and response, including standard operating procedures and training for the proper storage and handling of hazardous materials, as well as having a spill response plan for managing any leaks that do happen. And employee education, including regular training for all site personnel on BMP implementation, maintenance, and repair. Now, once you've selected the specific BMPs you'll implement on your site, you'll create a second active construction site map that clearly shows all the locations of each potential pollutant source and the relevant BMPs in place to control them. Again, you'll need to establish clear roles, training, and procedures for the regular inspection, maintenance, and repair of your BMPs. Now, this involves outlining specific responsibilities for certain individuals and general responsibilities for all employees to immediately report any accidental spills or stormwater discharges. Now that we understand the purpose and components of a stormwater pollution prevention plan and examples of the BMPs at our disposal, let's take a look at some NPDES templates and example plans that you can reference when creating your own plan. The NPDES section of the EPA website provides valuable guides and templates to help you craft your own stormwater pollution prevention plan including example content from various hypothetical construction projects. Now, depending on the size and complexity of your project, you can choose the example most closely related to your own. Let's take a quick look at the example for a small commercial site and navigate its contents together. Now, as we discussed earlier, Section 1 contains information from your site evaluation, assessment, and planning, including details about your project, the relevant site features and topography, potential sources of pollution, and your site maps. Sections 2, 3, and 4 cover the specific BMPs you'll implement on site, including each factor you'll need to take into consideration when selecting them, like phasing your construction activity to reduce overall disruption, how you'll protect storm drain inlets and establish perimeter controls, your materials handling and waste management policies, as well as spill prevention and control measures. Now, section 5 covers the roles and procedures for BMP inspections and corrective actions. Section 6 covers plans for record keeping and employee training regarding your plan. Section 7 covers your plan for the final stabilization of the site following the completion of the project. And Section 8 is where you'll place all the necessary certifications, site maps, record keeping logs, and other important documents related to your plan. Moving on to the document itself, you can see that each section contains a set of instructions for what should be included and how, including any relevant information you might need. For example, on section 1.6 on receiving waters, you'll see a detailed list of requirements for this section, followed by a thorough description of the site's receiving waters filled out by the planners. Similarly, in section 1.8, the template requests a list of both potential sources of sediment and sources of pollution other than sediment. Now, you can see that the planners have accordingly listed all potential sources of sediment pollution, other potential pollutants, and even a detailed table to provide as much information as possible. When it comes to BMPs, these template instructions are equally as detailed about what information is to be included, such as a clear description of what each BMP is, when it will be implemented, procedures for maintenance and inspection, its categorization, its location, and any design specifications. Now, for example, you can see in section 2.9 on establishing stabilized construction exits, the planners offer detailed information on the BMP's description, installation schedule, maintenance and inspection, responsible staff, and visual design specifications. Now, the rest of the template follows a similar guiding format for each section, and you should provide the same level of professional detail throughout as the planners have done here. For construction projects meeting certain requirements, you have the option to fill out a streamlined template specific for small residential lots. 
Now, this condensed template retains many of the same sections present in the standard format, but presents BMP selection in a more straightforward, multiple choice style. Additionally, it features an instructive appendix detailing the implementation of various BMPs suitable for these projects. To qualify for the small residential lot template, your site must disturb less than one acre of land, not cause disturbance within 50 feet of a water source, not disturb any steep slopes, not require the use of chemical treatment for stormwater, and not be located in sensitive areas, such as areas with endangered species, historic sites, or wetlands. Now, you can check the NPDES website for a full list of requirements to determine whether or not your project qualifies. Remember, each stormwater pollution prevention plan is unique, as is each construction site. Factors such as project size, terrain, and proximity to water sources can all significantly influence the specifics of your plan. For larger or more complex projects, you might also consider using stormwater modeling software to optimize your plan. These digital tools simulate rainfall and runoff patterns, allowing you to better understand the possible stormwater behavior on your site. The data gathered from these models can help inform your selection of BMPs and their placement. Now, lastly, you should be aware that guidelines for stormwater management can vary state by state. While NPDES regulations provide a national framework, your state may impose additional or more stringent requirements. It's essential to familiarize yourself with any local regulations to ensure your plan complies with all relevant guidelines. Effective stormwater management at construction sites is not just a regulatory necessity, but an environmental imperative. Now, the tools we've outlined in this training, from stormwater pollution prevention plans to best management practices, offer a blueprint for reducing stormwater pollution and protecting our water. Now, remember, a well-implemented plan begins with a thorough assessment and understanding of your construction site, including its stormwater patterns and potential pollutants. Implementing both structural and non-structural BMPs can then significantly reduce pollutants and manage runoff effectively. But a successful plan doesn't end with its creation. It requires regular inspections, ongoing maintenance, and prompt corrective actions. Most importantly, the role each member of your team plays in this process is vital. Your commitment to maintaining BMPs, reporting accidental discharges, and upholding the plan contributes to our collective goal of protecting the environment. With the knowledge and tools you've gained from this training, you can now start contributing effectively to stormwater management efforts at your construction site and significantly reduce your impact on the environment.